I think it's not only the right moment, it's arguably overdue uh, because before the coronavirus uh, quietened things for a bit, uh, these so-called protests, in fact, they are riots, not protests, uh, had gotten completely out of hand. Uh, people were being set on fire uh, by the rioters. Uh, policemen were being beaten within an inch of their lives by mobs. Now, no country in the world will tolerate this. Least of all the two countries, Britain and the United States, cluck, clucking so loudly about China's security legislation to be applied to a part of Chinese territory. Uh, and so the hypocrisy, the double standards in this, are marked even by the standards of Britain and the United States. And it means that hunters can shoot anything that moves. And it's now open season on China. Uh, they sense uh, that the wind is uh, behind their sails because of the fake uh, news about the coronavirus. Uh, they think that this has opened up a window uh, in Western public opinion, uh, which can be turned uh, to the advantage of the United States, to the disadvantage of China. And so they have seized this moment uh, for this full court press, pressing China on every front, on every level, uh, from trade through Corona, uh, through internal questions like Hong Kong. But, uh, in the last few days, uh, uh, Chris Patton, the last governor of Hong Kong, brought out of his glass case in the British Museum to thunder at China as if he was still the governor, as if the days when Britain could cut the heads of Chinese people were still here. Because of the false perception around the coronavirus outbreak and the global pandemic which has followed, uh, people are more open to anti-Chinese propaganda than at any time in my lifetime. Yes, I do. What the West will not tell you about Hong Kong's basic law is that the basic law is underneath the sovereignty of China's National People's Congress as the country's central legislative body. They seem to think that uh, Hong Kong is something completely independent, that China has no sovereign jurisdiction over it. But the basic law is underneath China's National People's Congress, and the National People's Congress has a right to interpret the basic law as it sees fit. And Article 18 of Hong Kong's basic law also specifies that the National People's Congress may impose laws outside of the field of designated autonomy in the field of national security, defense, and foreign relations, which, as the Sino-British Declaration say, remain the exclusive preserve of China's central government. So it is legitimate. It doesn't actually contravene the basic law or the Sino-British Declaration to do this. I don't agree, obviously. Uh, the West seem to think that they have a role in interpreting what constitutes one country, two systems and what does not, and that Beijing does not have any say in this, as if they appoint themselves overseers of what ought to go for Hong Kong and what does not. But what we also have to remember is that the neighboring Macau Special Administrative Region has had this national security law in place itself since 2001. And Macau continues to operate under a one country, two systems principle where it has given autonomies from mainland China proper. And if this law was implemented in Hong Kong, many aspects, well, pretty much all aspects of Hong Kong's unique social, political and economic system would remain as normal. I don't believe that China is interested in undermining the one country, two systems because it continues to derive a lot of benefits from Hong Kong as it is. The United Kingdom, as I said um, earlier, 
it seems to believe it has some kind of guardianship or trustee role over Hong Kong and that it is the one who acts in the true interest of the city rather than the country that it belongs to. In doing so, they don't really respect China's uh, sovereignty, despite the fact that Hong Kong is legally and constitutionally a part of China. In turn, the rhetoric seems to resemble the old colonial attitude of all and the unequal treaties which were imposed on China in the 19th and early 20th centuries. It's not equal. They are not willing to understand that China has sovereign rights over Hong Kong.